Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Know How is brought to you by Audible.com. Download your free audiobook right now at audiblepodcast.com slash knowhow. You're going to find out how to turn your PC into a DVR. Wow, today you'll learn how to record TV shows on your computer. Hey, hey, who? Welcome to Know How, the show where we show you how to do stuff. I as Actar Leo Laporte. Now, I as I know people are saying this at home. They're watching at home. Mm -hmm. They're saying, "Didn't we already learn how to make a home theater PC?" Yes, to, that's to, to take all your media and put it on one PC. But it was already recorded media. Right. This is like the stuff you downloaded. You got your favorite Twitch shows. You got your podcasts. Everything right. you want to watch. You had that in your media center. But what about Hogan's Heroes? See, we got an email, a couple emails. People yeah. are like, I'm sick and tired of paying for the fees for my cable company's yeah. DVR. They charge like five bucks a month for the DVR alone. And TiVo charges like a couple of bucks per month for the program data. So unless you buy the lifetime version of it, oh. you're paying a lot of money per month. So you're saying we could do all the stuff we do with a TiVo or a cable DVR or a dish box with our PC? Just with our PC. And I've been doing this for a couple, actually since like 2003 back when there was a whole other distribution of XP, Media Center Edition, way back when. Oh, I remember that. So, so yeah. I've been using this for a long time, and a lot of people were writing in, so I'm like, hey, why not just tell everybody how to do it? Because there's there are a lot of different things that have changed since I've been doing this years ago. Now, what you're going to show us, is it Windows-specific, or will this work on a Mac as well? Uh, we're going to show, a, we're going to briefly mention a couple of Mac solutions. Okay. We're going to stick to Windows today. I know people are going to say, hey, what about Myth TV? It's fantastic, it's amazing, it can do lots of things. I want to do a whole special episode on Myth TV. Myth is software that you'd run on a PC. That's, that's or Linux. Linux. Linux okay. It actually works with a whole, a whole environment. You can have Myth TV on an Ubuntu box or a Linux box, and then you can have clients around the house to watch the videos. You can have one central server. I love this, but I think that deserves its own episode. All right, so that won't be today. Today, today. we're just going to take a stock PC and mm -hmm. add hardware and software that give us the capability. Yeah, so what we're going to need for hardware, right? We're going to need a way to get our TV signal into our PC, of course, right? Because I, I said I wasn't going to use a chalkboard, but I lied. Let's break the rules. Because I need to write this down. I don't. I'm. I'm old. I don't remember this stuff. So we're going to need a PC, of course. You're going to need some kind of PC. And then what else? You're going to need some kind of tuner, some tuner. kind of way to get the the TV signal into your PC. Now, so, so you already have maybe a cable box, or you have a satellite box, or maybe you have antenna. Some people, you know, get free over-the-air uh, TV, right? Yeah, antennas are a special case, so we're going to okay. hold off on But antennas. these are going to go into your computer via a tuner mm -hmm. that, that lets you choose what channel. Otherwise, you're just going to get undifferentiated nothing. Yeah, there, there are a couple of solutions out there. There's some external ones and, and internal ones. First, for the Mac, I've always suggested using Elgato. They make some great things. Yeah. Uh, they, they have, I think they have a clear cam tuner. If you want to use this for your unencrypted Wait cable channels. Hold on. Clear cam. Yes. C-L-E-A-R-Q-A-M. What's that? It's a <laughs> <laughs> it's like quad angle something or other. Well, but I don't even. But this is this is an, an, an unencrypted. That's yeah, the clear part. It's unencrypted signals coming t from your cable. Digital cable. Right. Okay. We might as well mention the other ones. There's ATSC, which is your tuner stuff, mm -hmm. right? That comes in over the antenna, and then there's. What else is? Is there other there are other things as well? But I'm sure. Yeah, there's, there's switch <laughs> digital video. There's other kinds of so, things. And but what, the reason you mentioned that is you have to think about what your source for your content is going to be before you buy a card. You need to have the card that works with the content. Well, the thing is, you need a, a thing to understand the signal because if you right. don't have like ClearCam, that's going to be unencrypted, so you can actually use pretty much any tuner. Right. But if your cable company, like there happens to be one that rhymes with bombast, and they happen to encrypt, they're starting to encrypt their ClearCam things. They they move the channels. It's not really clear anymore, it's, is it? Well, no, you still get the channels, but they just don't line up. They're so in different places. Channel 7 is 82. Yeah, they did that to me. I had an ITV. We just showed the ITV mm -hmm. from Elgato. That's a really nice solution. If you already have a Mac Mini 
with HDMI in and a, and a, wow. and an iTV. You kind of got it, or HDMI out. I mean, you kind of get everything you need for that. So we're going to show you how you would do this with a with a more standard PC. Yeah. So what I suggest right now is because cable companies changes to definitely start looking for tuners that have cable cards. You need to have uh, access to a cable card. Okay. Really? Okay. So you want a tuner with a cable card? Something that it has can accept a cable card. Okay. Now, cable cards are something mandated in the United States by the FCC. They told the cable companies that you have to offer an alternative to those set-top boxes that you pretty much pretty much everybody has. But one of the things is they don't exactly promote the fact that the cable have company them. doesn't want you to have one. And it's because it's cheaper. It's uh, usually much cheaper and, to yeah, get. They can't lease you all that expensive gear. Right. You're not buying the, you're not using the cable DVR that has that limited functionality. You want the little cable card. What the cable card lets you do, effectively, it acts as a mini set-top box, right? You got your signal coming in, it's encrypted, you need a way to decrypt it. And that's what the cable card does. It's basically like your account. It's like, hey, he paid for HBO, so it's okay, let him watch HBO, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. It's everything that you need to decrypt these things. Now, I think that they, didn't they, the FCC now has announced another standard that's going to eventually replace cable card. They're, They're, so it's got, it's a kind of, we're in a confusing state right now. There's, curr there's currently two versions of cable cards out there right now. There's S card, which shows you one signal at a time. And there's M card, which shows you multiple ones. And that's the one you want to be able to get. An so M card. Right, because it has multiple signals. And Seton has a bunch of great solutions. There's a PCIe solution that goes in your PC. Costs about 200 bucks. Now, if you scroll down a little, you can see this red card. That can actually go into your PC if you have a tower. Obviously, you can't use it with an all-in-one. And you can attach a cable card into it, and you'll be able to receive signals. So that's C-E-T-O-N-C-O-R-P, Seatoncorp.com. That's right. Com. If you've got an all-in-one or a laptop and you want to use it, they all Seaton also makes an external solution. That's the Infinity TV for USB. And if you use it with an M card, you can decrypt up to four different signals at once. So you can watch one thing, record three others. Is that it, this? No, this is my favorite solution. This is better than those two. Uh, I believe so. From okay. my personal experience, this is actually, actually it's a bit antiquated at this point. This is from Silicon Dust. It is called the- I like the name. It's, it's called the HD Home Run. Now, this version has two tuners on the back. You can see this. It's like, this is the really old version. If we can cut to the- So it has, it has a uh, ca coax cable. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll move it up here. Yeah, so you can actually hook up, if you have clear cam, you can hook up cable into this, and this has tuners into it, so you can actually have your signals on this. But what makes the HD Home Run totally different than everything else is the fact that it attaches to your network and not your PC. So what you could do, and it works with anything, with Mac, Linux, and Windows, when you're running your Windows PC and you have the software installed from Silicon Dust, your computer is gonna act as if that tuner that's on the network is actually local. Now, it does require a wired network because you want to have your TV signal make it there, but it also allows you to have your PC somewhere completely different from where your signals are coming in. Do they still sell this? Yes, the, the newest version from Silicon Dust does have cable card slots. I believe it's called the Silicon Dust, it's called the Silicon Dust HD Home Run Prime. It's about $250. You can probably get it for less on the street but this is like an older version using so, tuners. So the, the first two, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get my head around Go for this. it. The first two things we talked about, Elgato and Seton Corp, those were tuners, mm -hmm. some of which supported cable cards, so you could hook them up to your cable signal and you get your QAM and clear QAM signals in there. And then they would hook up, though, to a computer directly. Directly, that's right. This one is kind of different because instead of hooking up to a computer directly, it does the same thing. It's a tuner, right? Mm -hmm. It hooks up to your network? It hooks up to your network. So the thing is, your PC, you can decide which PC acts as your DVR. So, so that's this makes anywhere. your whole home network basically television enabled. Pretty much. I mean, but all, I've, only one PC can access a, a tuner at a time, so you and can't... Is there Silicon Dust software? Yes, there's Silicon Dust software that lets you lets your computer understand that that device is its tuner. And How interesting! I've never heard of that. It's a fascinating piece of technology. When I heard it, it sounded too good to be true, but the fact that they've upgraded it with cable card right. means you just again you don't have to have your computer in the same room right. if you have a wired network. So this is handy, and I, I presume at, at any point you could say, okay, I'm going to record on this computer now instead of that computer. Yeah, you can switch Things it, like but that. you better, you you, you got to do a little bit Pay of gymnastics. Pay attention to which yeah. one's on. And this is not for Mac at all. 
Oh, it, is from, it works from Mac, Mac Linux, Linux, and Windows. So they have clients for all three platforms. That's right. And this hardware, and you put this in the closet or somewhere, wherever your cable is. That's great. I yeah. love that. So like if your cable How much is that? That run, runs from like $100 to $250. The uh, cable card version is $250 with uh, cable card slots. Very good. SiliconDust.com, the home run. Now you could, I mean, you could probably use something like this that has a tuner with your set-top box with an IR blaster and you could probably do that, which if you can see Leo's face, it, it, it's that, that sounds a little complicated. horribly clunky, yeah. doesn't always work. Yeah. I highly, I don't recommend it at all. So the, what, the IR blaster you mentioned, the infrared blaster hangs over the front of the infrared receiver yeah. on your cable box and the this box or whatever box you have tells the cable box change to channel 12 i want to record now it's it's funky sometimes when it doesn't work you end up recording the golden girls instead of you know breaking right. bad because this the, the little tuner didn't work the little usb didn't so work. so the point of the cable card is that i don't have to use the cable nope. the set top box from the cable company anymore at all your cable card is working with your pc and your pc is controlling it directly so that's that's the hardware side and the reason why again i'm telling you to move away from just hooking up a cable directly into this is because those cable companies are getting a little tricky as to where the channels go. Well, it's another reason to get something up to date too, because they changed, when we went to digital, everything changed and everybody got silly and they took that as an opportunity to move everything around. So get the most recent version of the Silicon Dust product, the HD Home Run product. All right, so I've got a tuner. <laughs> now right. what? We're gonna have to watch stuff. I've got TV coming onto my computer, that's a good sign. We're gonna need a software solution, but before we get to software, okay. I think we should thank audible.com, because they're let's helping us Let's do that. Out. I would love to do that. Audible, of course, uh, means you don't have to watch TV anymore. So for, <laughs> it's, a, it's the easy solution to all this. Just throw away your TV. Keep your computer, though, so you can go to audible.com. It's a bookstore, an audio bookstore, 100,000 titles, everything from thrillers to nonfiction, technology to self-help. They've got uh, everything except, I don't know if they have many cooking books, but in every other respect, they're, and by the way, sci-fi, fantastic. Audible's actually created a program called Audible Frontiers, where they are recording in their beautiful state-of-the-art studios at the Audible headquarters, they've got nine of them, uh, classic science fiction books that were never turned into audio books. I went over there a, a couple of years ago, I was blown away. Uh, so, so classics from Arthur C. Clarke and Robert Heinlein that were never audio books now are. So if you're trying to get into a, science fiction or even better if you have a kid or a friend you want to introduce to science fiction audible is perfect for that audible has classics they've got uh, uh, spy novels every genre even yes 50 shades of gray so here's the deal if you visit uh, audiblepodcast.com slash know-how you can try it free for 30 days and get a free audiobook you'll be signing up for the gold account that's a book a month a credit a month uh, most of the books at Audible are a single credit, so go browse around, look at all the great titles, pick one, and then listen. I think you're going to love it. I think you're going to want to stay a member, but if you decide not to cancel at any time, uh, the book is yours to keep forever, and if you cancel in the first 30 days, you pay absolutely nothing. It's a really great way to get introduced to the exciting world of audio books. I listen on my iPhone, my iPod, your Android phone. There's a great Audible app for all of those and for Windows Phone as well. Uh, of course, on your computer, I use my Sonos to listen. I, I'm just an Audible fanatic. You never have to pick up a book again. You can listen to all your favorite books and get so much more reading done. Audiblepodcast.com slash knowhow. Please, I know you've heard me talk about it before. Try it today. It's a great time to try Audible. Audiblepodcast.com slash knowhow. You know, I love about Audible, the fact is, if you're listening to an, if, to an embarrassing book, like Fifty Shades of Grey, if you're curious yeah, about it, yeah. people don't notice it because you got your earbuds in, you know, you don't have a book okay. in front of you showing the title screen. You just so that's have, a pro tip. Don't yeah. listen on your stereo. You want to wear yeah, headphones. Put your earbuds in when you're listening to Fifty Shades that's of Grey. That's where I went wrong. I knew I was doing something wrong. The neighbor kept pounding on the... So, okay, let's to recap where we are. Sure. We're, we're going to show you how to record TV shows, movies, stuff that's on your cables or your satellite on your computer, make a, a computer into a DVR. To do that, we start with a computer, obviously, and now we've got a piece of hardware called a tuner, and there are a variety of different technologies you have to th think about. Are you getting it from cable or satellite? And then the suggestion uh, that I think is a very good one is instead of trying to have this interface somehow with your cable box or your satellite box, get a cable card enabled device then you can go to your cable company say i need a cable card that becomes your account you don't need a set top box anymore the tuner has everything it needs to be able to give you a signal into your computer one small uh, issue though is that that satellite companies are not required 
to have cable okay, cards. Okay, so it won't so work for Dish or DirecTV. You can, you can do it with some IR blaster funkiness, which I don't recommend again. So you still need the set-top box for satellite, but for cable, you cable, can, you cable can get cards is the way it. to go. The okay. thing is, you need to check. Uh, sometimes people were questioning: Does Verizon FiOS count as cable? Because they use a fiber. They do no. count. They do. Yes, they have to offer a cable card. And there's been that's good news. There's been a change also that self-install is now mandatory. So you have to be allowed to do it yourself. When I was trying this years ago, they, they actually to, would roll a truck to give. They you sent a, a technician card. to bring a PC. It's like a PC <laughs> card. It's this big. You, if you can figure out how to put a That's card in the crazy. slot. That's crazy. That's crazy. Very silly. Things have changed a lot. So definitely so, keep pushing for and, it. And 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 I as did recommend it. I would go to the website and oh, get yes. the links for this. This is the HD Home Run from Silicon Dust, which is a clever way of doing this. Instead of hooking it up to your PC, you hook it up to your network, and any PC on the network can be configured to use right. this as a tuner. And if you're listening to us and like, where are all the links? I don't know where anything is. Everything is at twit.tv slash kh. We've got show notes. We've got links. We've got instructions. I know because I write them. So I hope they're there. Uh, definitely check it out for all kinds of show notes if you are really curious about how to do a project. And check out other projects, twit.tv slash kh. You can download the videos. You can slow me down if you want to. You could do that possibly with the video on demand anytime you want. There are some things that Cable Card won't let you do. Uh, uh, video on demand, some video on demand doesn't work. Right. Some of the interactivity doesn't work, right? There's, there's a trade-off. The thing is you're not paying the same fee, but you do have the ability to control exactly what you're doing. And that's why I'm going to talk about the software solutions about how are you going to record your shows. Now you have, you got your cable somehow attached to your, to your computer. How are we possibly going to get a show on this? This, this computer is actually a very good choice because this is a home theater computer. Yep. Oh, you got the remote. Got I was looking remote. for that. What? You know, you always steal the remote. I'm trying to watch a show here. No, all right. <laughs> so this is, this is kind of cool. This is the Dell XPS yeah. 1. I reviewed this on Before You Buy this week. And it has co coax cable. It has HDMI. It has a lot of the features that would make this a great uh, home theater. What cracks PC, me right? up is that people uh, don't realize that Windows or Microsoft they had built-in media center into their PCs since I think uh, after Windows XP. It was a standard application, which is gonna get the boot. You have to get Windows 8 Pro to get it back. But if you have a Windows 7 machine or lower, you already have a solution it's free. built in for free. Yeah. And it's actually really good. So too. I'm gonna try to run it because I know this requires a distance. Yeah, we were having a hard time yesterday. Let me try it. Okay, if, if and when. This, this, this is the remote that comes with the Dell, and it has a Windows Media Center yeah, button so right on the remote. I'll just click the button right there. All right, there, that's now, probably easier. the Windows Media Center experience, it's a 10-foot interface, so you can see it from very far away. And one of the reasons why I recommend this one, amongst all others, and we'll talk about one more solution, is because the guide data with this is free forever. Microsoft provides it. Right, so you're going to get accurate data, available for Microsoft and you never have to pay for that again. That's cool. Now I have had some issues, I mean when you go into the into settings, you can go into TV setup and it would look on your network to find your tuner. It works like a charm, it'll do an auto scan for your channels. It's a really powerful solution and I say this is one of the best because of this. This, this is around my house, when you record a TV show, you want to watch it somewhere else. Will the will the HD Home Run software work with me, Windows Media Center? So it, it sees it as a tuner, even though this it's, is working with Windows. It's going to work on the really on the base cool. level of Windows. Okay. So any DVR solution, whatever you're using, was going to see it. Media Center obviously has an attachment to Xbox. So if you record a show here, you can watch it on your Xbox elsewhere using the Media Center extender function, which I really love because in the practical application, you want to be able to move these videos around. Now. At one point in the TV setup, you're going to be asked your zip code. That's for the cable guide information. Right. So it's going to try to figure out, okay, where are you? What's going on? And you can tell it exactly what cable company you have. It'll tell you where the channels belong. This is great because, you know, these TV guides are all disappearing. I'm glad Microsoft's keeping this up. If you go, if you get the Mac solution, the Elgato solution, they offer a program guide, but it's $15 right. a month. And unless you want to start programming your videos like the old VCR days, where like, please record the show at 8.30 on Thursday night. You need a guide. You need a guide. You need a guide. I guess you could manually enter in 8.30 Thursday night, but that's you kind could. of You could. It's kind of ugly. It's a way to go. While this is going on... This is going to take forever, so, well, maybe not. Well, it's, it's going pretty fast. Yeah, well, this part does. In my experience, the first half is super fast. And the, and then, <laughs> the last two dots, if you can see this, take about three hours. Yeah, they really need to spread that out. In my experience, by the way, if it seems like Windows Media Center is hanging while looking for the channels, step away. Right. It's still working. Right. It just takes Well, there are forever. a lot of channels now on cable. Oh, it yeah. It takes a while to scan through all of these. But if you're like, forget it. I'm not using Microsoft for anything. All right, should I cancel out of it? Other than my OS. Well, we can just... 
start D out okay. of it. Right? Let's just put it aside. There is the open source solution media portal. Now I've used so this. So this is the equivalent of Windows Media Center? Yes, it is a media center piece of software okay. that also has DVR functionality. Now some folks were bringing up Plex earlier. Does Plex record? Plex doesn't do a DVR. It's a great okay. media center, but it doesn't do DVR. Uh, media Portal, though, has a DVR functionality, and it's free, open source, and it's got tons of plugins. Should I run that here? Yeah, it's media right Portal? down there. Oh, you already got it installed. Installed. It takes a little bit of time, but so it's got a bunch it's of skins. It's also a lean back experience. Right. These are all 10 foot interfaces. Uh, so you're going to okay. always you know, step back Functional and away fun. from the TV. Yes, yeah, so you can see the chat room right there. Yeah. Hey, guys. <laughs> Cameo from the chat room. Okay. So we're going to go Here's, into. You have the mouse and keyboard. Yeah, we can. Uh, you drive. Let's go into. We can go into TV. You're going to say, well, there's nothing hooked up to this because, well, we have satellite. So I don't right. Know. But it does have the same thing. Now, what I understand this though, is what this is going to be a view from your tuner yeah. card, and that's why you need a tuner. What I understand though is that it does ship with its own EPG, electronic program guide. However, I haven't heard the best things about it. That's why there's about like 10 plugins available for program guides. Okay. So you could try it out, you can see if it works. It might be a little iffy. This is why I keep going back to Media Center because it actually has reliable program guide Microsoft data. Microsoft has obviously licensed this mm -hmm. from TV Guide and and sometimes and, uh, program guides disappear. Like I've yeah. had this happen before right. uh, with uh, older older pieces of hardware. Contracts expire, you no longer have the guide data, right. and then you can't record television anymore. Right, right. So Media Portal, totally free. I love it. Let me, let me write that down, because we, we know about Windows Media Center. And, and as you said, we're going to lose it in Windows 8 unless you have the Pro version. Mm -hmm. So that's WMC. And then this one's called Media Portal. And it's open source? This is open source, yes. And, so and it's got plugins like crazy. So like when you, if you go to Media Center and you try to get plugins, sometimes they break because Microsoft breaks them. But Media Portal doesn't do that. So, uh, but the, one of the weird things about Media Portal. Wow, look, there's videos on here. Wow, uh, that's from the video section. Uh, they, uh, they have, the recorded formats are in .ts format. So you can convert them, you have a little bit more room, but when you're recording things on Media Center, it's in Windows proprietary format you have a very hard time editing those things. I recorded some horsies. Horsies move. The wildlife, you can see them go. <laughs> but yeah, so like, I definitely suggest, uh, I like Media Center because I'm, I'm about It sounds like it's worth getting reality here. And it is free unless you have to buy Windows 8 Pro. Yeah, so if you have um, a PC that's bought before October, like you have. And I, I've always liked the interface for Windows Media Center. I, I think, think it's a nice looking interface. It's so polished that it's, it's just so strange that people don't even know it's there. Yeah. But I want to do a quick reality check here. Because what, we, what we're doing is we're just kicking a DVR out, right? We're saying forget it. We're not bothering to have this dumb box. We're going to use a computer. It might be a little clunky sometimes. Remember, you're dealing with a full PC. So if Windows has an update, you might see a pop-up screen. So if we go to the computer, you'll see a screen in the middle. You have your remote, and you can't access it unless you have a keyboard and mouse. really takes you out of the experience. So you might have crashes. You might have... Uh, you might have restarts it's happening. early days. Actually, it's not early days. It's just funky. That's, well, it's a computer. That's right. the thing. It's doing 50 different things versus a DVR, which is pretty dumb, hideous, but it I does phone, the job. It's so funny that you should say that because I d I've done the same kind of explanation to people and I almost always say, but just buy a TiVo. <laughs> just rent it from the cable company. It's so much easier. Anyway, at least you know how to do it. Yeah. And you know what you need, the if pieces If you're willing you to need. put up with it, like I really enjoy it. I really love using... You've, uh, so you've done this all along. I've had Media Center since 2003. Yeah. And you prefer to do that. You put up with the crashes and the occasional glitches. And well, uh, that's why I've always been looking into like wireless keyboard and mice solutions, right. gyration mice, so I can control that. That's what this whole system, this w Dell One, is designed to do. Lots of things. I mean, you have, that's the thing. You have to be willing to pr uh, right. be dealing with that. But if you have somebody else in your house and you're like, well, honey, I'm taking out the DVR. What do you got there? That's a Dell. <laughs> I mean, it might not go so well. You know, you yeah. might you might have an argument or two about it. And so, if you want it to be stable, be prepared to be there all the time. Okay, that caveat in place. Let's run back through what we need to do this. It's not that hard. You, of course, you have a PC. If you're on a Mac, the instructions are a little bit different. Mm -hmm. you, a Mac Mini makes a great home theater PC. You combine that because it has HDMI. You combine that with the Elgato uh, ITV, and you've got a great solution that comes with all the software as well. Uh, but no matter what, Mac or PC, you're going to need a tuner. On the Mac, it's the Elgato. Uh, on the PC, uh, you, there are a variety of places you can go. Uh, uh, I as like SeatonCorp.com. 
Uh, but he strongly likes uh, the uh, HD home run from siliconduste.com because it runs over the network. Uh, once you've got a tuner somehow hooked up to your PC, whether it's directly or via the network, and by the way, you want to get a tuner that'll support cable cards so you can eliminate the set-top box if possible, mm -hmm. then you're going to need some software. Everybody's got Windows Media Center if you've got Windows. That's a great choice. Media Portal would be the free and open source op uh, alternative. The real issue is program guides. Windows Media Center comes with one paid for by Microsoft. Media Portal... It can be hit and miss depending on which program guide you're yeah. using. And there's some folks in the chat room saying, like, "What about Hop Hog? They make tuners. They make. There are a lot of different companies that make tuners. These are just the ones I've had personal experience with, and I wanted to recommend those because there are like thousands of companies that make tuners. Well, Hop Hog's really well known, though. I love Hop Hog, and and the truth is, their Win TV. If you Google, it's easier to Google W I N TV than yes, it is it to is. Google <laughs> Hop Hog. But Hop Hog is, I think, using exactly the same. Chinese-made hardware that uh, Elgato's using. They mm -hmm. just label it, they brand it. If you compare the two of them, whether it's the sticks or the, U or the uh, USB devices, uh, they look exactly the same. So I think there's just kind of a commodity marketplace of these products. Um, but yes, Hapag is excellent. Um, again, if you can get one that supports cable card, that really takes a lot of the trouble out of this. It'll help you out for the next couple of years. I mean, if you're willing to just <laughs> take the risk of we're, losing we're out. We're kind of in flux right now. That's yeah. the real problem. The FCC has not done a good job of uh, forcing the cable companies to cooperate. So I am going to show you something very beautiful. This was designed by one of our fans. He, we asked, in fact, we continue to ask you to design T-shirts. We had a vote. We picked this one. This is the Twit logo on the back. That's the back of the T-shirt with all of the shows, including Know How in tiny letters as the background of the Twit logo. And I think if I click it, can I get the reverse reverse side? I don't know where. Here it is. Here's the back. And on the on the on the front, it has just a little tiny, very subtle Twit TV. You can show your allegiance to the Twit network. We're selling these for one month only. Once the, uh, once the month goes by, once uh, September is over, you won't be able to buy these anymore. Just $20. You have your choice, by the way. We're, do we're doing a little bit of a higher quality thing here. We're using American Apparel or Fruit of the Loom t-shirts. And proceeds, of course, go to benefit the Twit Network. I would love to see this get to 1,000 t-shirts. 669 sold. There are 22 days left. So I guess it goes a little farther than uh, through September. What is that, through middle of October, I guess? All right. Just be prepared for people left. reading your back. These are little letters. What is that? What are the you blue, saying? What is it? In, in the blue, those, that, th those are the shows that are available right now. Know how. I, uh, I5 for the iPhone, Tech News Today, Windows Weekly, all, everything's there. All on there. Now, I got to tell you, we aren't going to print the shirts until the 22 days have gone by. So if you order now, expect four weeks before you get your shirt. But, uh, but these are beautiful shirts. They're very, I think $20 is a very good price. Uh, and uh, it helps out uh, Twit. So T, I didn't mention where to go. Teespring, T E E S P R I N G dot com slash Twit, if you'd like to get your beautiful. Uh, Twit t-shirt. We're going to do more designs and uh, I think it's fun to do you designs you can only get for a limited time. This will once these once these are sold, they will never be made again. We're going to break the dyes. We're going to bury them deep within a salt mine in Utah. They will never again be made as long as I am alive to protect your investment. That's you that's, have my word. It's quite the promise. <laughs> Don't know how to follow that other with an email, other than using uh, you guys to give us an email. It's a great thing. Last week we showed you how to ditch your landline uh, using Skype or Uma, a whole bunch of solutions. And Joe Rollins wrote in saying he ditched his landline several years ago. However, I took a different track. Extreme Technologies X Link Bluetooth Gateway let us connect our mobile phones up to three over Bluetooth and use our existing home phones to make and receive calls. The system has worked great over the past five plus years with six different mobile phones. I highly recommend the X-Link Bluetooth gateway for cord cutters. And Joe, that's a great tip because actually I tested that out years ago. I just oh, you forgot know about it. Oh, yeah, I was, like, I was like, oh, well, yeah, I completely forgot. Uh, you can use a, an X, Extreme Technologies X-Link Bluetooth adapter with your existing landlines. That way you can pair your phone. There are a lot of cordless phones these days that will pair uh, your phone with the base. So you might not need the adapter. So take a look uh, when you're buying a 
one of these landline style phones to see if they have Bluetooth ab abilities. So what, are you using your cell phone for phone calls or are you using your landline for your phone calls? Well, it, the landline style phone, that's what I want to call them now because I don't know what right. to call them. So you don't have a landline. You don't need to. You're using your cell phone. Right, it just yeah. pairs with it. Yeah. So you can get calls and you can always find a handset. And there are a lot of companies, Plantronics and others, that make uh, devices that will hook to both your cell phone and the landline. If you didn't plug them into a landline, it would work the same way as this X-Link. It's, it's just going to use your cell phone for your phone call. Yeah, so if you guys have any tips or, or tricks, you want to give us uh, some, some show ideas, we're getting so many show ideas. Again, you guys wanted to see how to make a DVR, so that's why we showed you how to make a DVR to your PC. You can send us an email at knowhow at twit.tv, or you can send us a voicemail if you'd like to. It's, uh, what is the number, Leo? 408? You're asking me. 408800. <laughs> I don't even know what day it is. Thursday? My shoes don't match. 800. I don't. 408-800-KNOW. You can leave us a voicemail. 5669. 408-800-KNOW, 5669, if you want to use that. If you can't spell, then just send us an email. I'll try to figure it out. Uh, that pretty much does it. That's how to make a PC into a DVR. It's exciting stuff. That's awesome, and I thank you, I, as Actar. We do uh, the show Before You Buy every uh, Thursday, right after iPad Today. It's fun if you, you watch buy. live. We'd love to see you before in you the uh, chat day. room. But if you can't, we make on-demand versions available on YouTube, too, by the way, in our Twit channel. Soon to be a know-how channel on YouTube. Nifty. But right now, it's YouTube.com slash Twit. Or uh, get the on-demand from TWIT.TV slash KH. Do it with me. That, Kate Patel always used to do that. Slash, slash K H. -H. <laughs> I think you said before you buy is done. No, we do. Did we I do, say before we, you we buy? We do know how after what I. What the hell show today. is this? Oh, this because that's because this PC was on before you is buy. This bef is this know how? This is uh, Thursdays right done? after iPad today. We do know how. Mm -hmm. Right, it's supposed to be three o'clock, but it's like seven in the morning now. Yeah, I think uh, it's, <laughs> it's it's I think, what is it? Well, uh, my shot wasn't right. I had to adjust it. But it's fine now. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for joining us. Now that you know how to record TV shows on your PC, go do it. Please.